So welcome everybody to this video around breath, body, movement, aka exercise. And that's the first place that I want to dive in. The word exercise, even just that, has a particular vibrational quality, has a particular um, feeling to it. It, for me, has a connotation of gym, of effort, of sweat, of push, um, highly um, forceful. Whereas the word breath body uh, movement has a wisdom to it that is not from ego, but more integrated with my, my meat suit. Now, personally speaking, I love to move in the morning. I get up and I just go, go, go. But we're not all the same and our doshas will affect the experiences that we have in our bodies, the types of movement that are beneficial to our bodies, and even down to the, the way that the fibers have been almost knitted in the body. So whilst you are all created equal in many ways, the way that the elements have been built in your body are going to let you experience your body differently. There are three doshas and I, kapha have a lot of earth and water. They tend to be very solidly built and they have amazing stamina, right? They are the person that in a class, let's just take a yoga class for an example, right? They are able to really hold in yin poses, like they're patient, they can hold those poses a long time, hip openers especially, right? And then you have Pitta, who have a lot of fire, a lot of water. Their blessing, I guess, their strength is their strength, right? So they are able to hold the planks, they're able to really hold stronger poses without um, collapse or fatigue. And then Vata, those guys get the stretch part, right? So those are the people whose legs are like way up here. I'm sure have been in a class where, you know, maybe it's a cross training class or a yoga class and you're maybe thinking, oh, I'm such a loser. The person next to me is able to hold plank for longer than I can. The person next to me is able to get deeper in this pose than I can. The person next to me is able to, you know, do something that I can't do. And we tend to compare ourselves without taking into account that our doshic imprint is really different. If you're in, if you're a vata person, right, who has a lot of air and space, you're the stretchy kind of person, long limbed gymnast type, and you're in plank next to someone who's super pitta, you know, it's going to feel different. A pitta is not going to feel the, 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 you know, the fire, the vata, it's going to um, send their body out of balance to try and keep up with that body type because it's just not in their composition. And conversely, you know, we can get into this place where we are the person holding the plank and see everyone else as losers. Right? So, you know, you want to take into, into consideration as you're working out, especially if it's group classes, that the people around you have different dosha compositions. So not judging them as lame or losers because they're not doing what you can do or conversely seeing yourself as a loser or lame because you can't do what they're doing. As I say, it's down to even the compactness of the fibers in the, in the muscle and, and how your body kind of layers on musculature or, or not. Okay, so another mindset that we can have, and especially if you're a little bit older, like I am, is this 90s mindset. The 90s mindset is the no pain, no gain mindset. So you know what, guys? Leave the 90s mindset, no pain, no gain, in the closet with the 90s clothes. That's the bright pink leotards and the leg warmers. It didn't lead us to be any better and in fact has led to a lot of injury. 
But beyond that, I want to speak about it from an Ayurvedic perspective of when we push too hard, when we kind of bully ourselves into working out, what we can do is we end up tripping beyond the health benefit and into burning out that ojas, that ojas that gives a kind of nice radiance, a plumpness, a kind of, I want to say like a, a magical aura suit around you. It feels good. It feels people are happy to be in your presence. When we burn and the word we, you know, burn it up, right? When we burn it up, we also burn that out, right? Work out. I know so many people being in the, the wellness and fitness industry who are, you know, in their 40s, 50s, kind of my age, but they have gone so hard at it. Their joints are worn out. They, they've they lost this kind of like sheen. They've lost the, the radiance. So keep that in the back of the mind, right? There's a fine line between working your muscles, staying strong in your musculature to, to keep the musculoskeletal um, system supported well, and then going beyond, right? And again, it comes into like slipping into the ego, slipping into the headset of got to push otherwise you're not going to be effective or not worthy so as soon as you notice that you've lost this sense of expand contract the, it's the breath right go in go out work hard rest when you notice right you've lost the standa and something's rigid you're holding the breath, you're holding something that's stopping this pulsation, you're stopping your health, right? So think of spanda as you're practicing. Am I breathing? Is this pulsation happening? Teachers are always telling us, you know, breathe in, breathe out. We like to create this pulse. Even if you're doing weights, right? There's a contraction, release, a contraction, release. Try to find it in any form of movement that you're doing. <laughs> I don't know how often I tell people to remind them to breathe, you know, in yoga classes. And sometimes I get this kind of like, a, it's a look. <laughs> it's like, enough already, I'm breathing. What do you want from me? Yes, I know you're breathing, but we're talking about prana. Now, prana is not the same as oxygen. Prana rides on the breath, but because it's this, I want to say like little sparkles, that's a cute way of putting it, or electromagnetic particles, a little bit more scientific, that can go through the whole body. So it's not just about breathing here in the lungs, it's about breathing, full body expanding, full body contraction, contracting, and it's the prana then I'm looking for you to move. Sometimes I see a lot of movement going fast where the prana doesn't actually get to move. So again, slow it down a little, be deliberate with your action, take your attention to where you wanna push this prana. Think of prana being like, like water moving through earth, right? And you're kind of deliberately taking it all the way through the body. So it's not just about right? like the whole pumping of the, of the lungs. So when I ask you to breathe, that's what I'm asking you to do. Yoga is great, right? I do love it. And it is breath based, which is also fabulous. But there can also be this kind of yoga snobbery. Right? That can be a mindset of I do yoga. It's covered. Even though I was breathing and I was in the body and so on, I wasn't switching it up and it was very limiting. So then when I, I hurt my back and I couldn't do much of the, the yoga practice and I had to really get creative and find something because I do love to move that would allow me to move. And I started to explore different practices, different movement techniques, including, you know, Feldenkrais. And then as I came out and my back was no longer giving me any kind of pain, I wanted like a really strong practice, like a cardio practice. So there are many, many ways to move the body. And 
you need to take a moment to look at how you approach your breath body practice right are you mixing it up or are you just staying in the boot camp camp or the yoga camp or the you know the dance camp are you just in your little zone and not mixing it there are various practices in terms of intensity there are various practices in terms of parts of the body um, cardio soft movement heart movement stabilizing movement um, switch it around and if you are staying with your yoga practice um, chances are you're practicing in the way that you've become very accustomed to. So if you tend to be really hard on yourself, you're probably always going really hard. If you tend to be a little bit kind of shy of getting in there and really engaging some muscles, then you're probably always doing that. My teacher used to say, do the opposite of what you want in a yoga practice. So if you really want to like kick it and flow and hold those planks, do the opposite. Take child's pose. Rest. Skip the flow. If you never want to take a flow, you always want to take the modified version, even though you're able to take a harder version. You always want to use the props, even though you could do without the props. Do the opposite. Take the props out and do the flow. See how it feels. Get creative, you know. Look at kids and the way they move their bodies. They're jumping trampoline. Go swing on a swing. Take up kung fu, belly dance, Bollywood, kettlebells, right? Have fun. Enjoy it. And see that you, by your choices, are balancing out the way that your body is building its blocks. Wishing you all well and go shake a little something somewhere.